We both lie silent still in the dead of the night Although we both know close together We feel miles apart inside Was it something I said or something I did? Did my words not come out right? Though I tried not to hurt you Though I tried But I guess that's why they say Every rose has its thorn Just like every night Has its dawn Just like every cowboy Sings a sad, sad song Every rose has its thorn <laughs> yeah, it does. Bye bye. Get him, CC. I listen to a favorite song playing on the radio. Hear the DJ say that it loves it is a gun. Is a go. But I wonder, does he know? Has he ever felt like this? And I know that you'd be here right now if I could have let you know somehow. I guess every rose has its thorn. Just like every night has its dawn. Just like every cowboy sings a sad, sad song. Every rose has its thorn. Get him, CC. The best part about that group, that song, was the little asides. When Brett Michaels would look at him and he would say, Get him, CC. Or he would be like, Yeah, it does. That, my people, is 1990s rock, maybe late 80s, early 90s rock, and it had a message. And it was also based off one of the best shows of all times. Um, <laughs> but, but, I was making fun of somebody the other day who says that, the best show of all times. Like everything's a competition, like everything has to have a top five. What's your favorite? Blah blah blah. And I'm when I'm when there's a conversation conversation lull, uh, that's what I might go to. And I always hate myself because if you're smart, you'll respond. Well, I don't like to categorize or I don't like to label this, 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 and this. You know. And I'm like, yeah, you got me, bro. You got me. But um. That show was amazing. Well, let, let me. Most of you guys weren't alive when this show came off, but it was called uh, "Rock of Love," and it was started. Started. Um, sharded. God, I'm on a roll today. Sharded. God knows. Best scene in Along Came Polly. This is not a linear show, people. I might go from, <laughs> might circle around, and sometimes I might not even get back to what I'm talking about because I just go one take. That's all I have. One take. And, uh, you know, it's just live. Because if I gave you anything else, you'd call me a sellout. But anyway, along came Polly. Philip Seymour Hoffman. Best actor of all time. Not with us anymore. Goes up to Ben Stiller. They're at a dinner party or something. And everybody has been to a bad din dinner party before. And it's tense. And it's not fun. Parties aren't fun. If you're going to host a party, usually it's not going to be very fun. I realize that people just don't know how to go have a good time. Unless you are real. I've been to some good parties, but a lot of parties are very stiff. you know. But anyway, Philip Seymour Hart, and this is a movie. So this is a great point because it's cinema. Anyway, Philip Seymour Hoffman is talking to Ben Stiller. And they're at this party. And Ben Stiller meets Jennifer Aniston. They're hitting it off. And of course, Philip Seymour Hoffman goes. And he's with... Uh, ben Stiller, and he goes up to him, and he goes, uh, we gotta go. I mean, they're at a dinner party, and he's met this female, you know how that goes. And Ben Stiller's like, hey, what are you talking about? I'm just getting into my into my groove with this girl. And he says, uh, yeah, I sharted. We gotta go, I sharted. And, <laughs> and Ben Stiller's like, what? What'd you, what'd you, shart? you, shart? you sharted? What is that? And he, he explains what it is, and 
just even in that silly movie, Philip Seymour, Seymour Hoffman shows that he can act even in the most ridiculous roles um, 100% better than most people can ever could ever act. You know what I'm saying? Even that role, he's like, oh, you know, the discomfort. Like, you could really see that he has a load in his pants. And he's just like, oh, you know, it's probably, you know, running down his leg at the moment. And he's like, in his mind, in his actor mind, he's like, he's going to that place. He's like, man, you're really at a dinner party. And you really just had some bad food. And you just, you know, doo-dooed yourself. And go with that inspiration. Go with that. And he would take that, process it, and spit it out into the most purest form of acting. And that's why he is one of our finest actors, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Um, but look, from the Freudian slip, let's get back to the best show on earth. Rock of Love. Yes, I said it. Rock of Love. And if you didn't know what Rock of Love was or you were not alive, let me explain what Rock of Love was. Rock of Love was a show. Um, I couldn't even, maybe in the 90s? Yeah, 90s that, maybe later, I can't remember. But anyway, it was a show where Brett Michaels, it's kind of like The Bachelor, where Brett Michaels was trying to find love. And the names of the girls were like Cookie, um, Hoops, um, you know, uh, I can't even remember, uh, you know, Cheeky, you know, or something, or like, you know, Thick. I think was one of her names, um, you know, sassy, you know, so, you know, or something, you know, where everybody was, we get in a fight, like there's 20 women and, uh, these women were respectable. They're probably, you know, most of them were Christians, church going girls. And he would sit there and he, I think he just like basically, you know, just, you know, every week he would pick one and to go off the show. Um, I'm pretty sure they're still married, happily married, whoever he picked. Um, you know, I think he picked Thick. I think Thick. That was they had nicknames because they had to uh, protect the identity. But one girl was named Thick, and uh, he ended up picking her because she had the best personality. Um, but it was a great show, and that's about the that was about the length that and Flavor of Love when Flavor of Flav, who's my one of my favorite part of one of my favorite hip hop groups of all time, um, Public Enema. Ended up, they, they they found love. As soon as they found love, I was good with the reality TV. I, I, I'm done with it. I haven't, I, don't, I haven't really watched. I maybe watched something here and there. Um, but I was thinking about maybe watching The Bachelor again and maybe getting back into it. But um, I don't know why. I just saw like a clip and it was amazing. Um, I saw, I thought it was pretty brilliant. I think I, it might be something that I could bring to the, maybe I could have like a two minute Bachelor set. I need to bring in a new demographic of, of uh, listeners. I was breaking it down the other day. Um, you know, and, um, I need to, I need to get some more, uh, TV viewers that like reality shows. That slice of the pie is pretty thin. So tell your friends about it if they really like that stuff. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, that song is amazing, bro. It's about, man, it's about so many different things. It's about love mainly. And, uh, you know, and he was one of the greatest, uh, artist of all time. Um, he was from the band Poison, and uh, you know they they had a lot of uh, they had a lot of amazing albums they put together. So check them out if you've never seen Brett Michaels, or you can check out the show. Um, you know they go on little hikes and stuff. Uh, that's pretty good for a first date, right? A little hike. I did that a couple times. Hike so they can tell you, <clears throat> so they can immediately find out that you're out of shape because you're breathing hard, not even steep quarter mile <sighs> you know she's like this is the guy I'm supposed to you know raise a family with you know or whatever they're probably thinking like ridiculous thoughts that I would never even think the thing but now I think it that's probably what I'm thinking right it's all a mind game baby it's all a mind game funny story I was up at the pharmacy today uh, picking up my stuff because I'm getting old got medication because I'm getting old so i don't probably don't have much left longer but anyway i'm gonna keep releasing apps because that's what the people want baby um but uh but i, <laughs> I didn't know i pulled up because it's cold bro 
I like it. I like it when it's cold though. I like when you can smell cold in the air. I like that. Last night I was telling my friends, I said, I can smell the cold coming. <sighs> you know, you can smell it. Um, and we're out in a place in an area that I thought was pretty convinced that uh, True Detective 4, season 4, was going to be shot there because there was a barn and there was these twigs that were shaped somewhat suspect. Great show. Got to get on that new one. So, for the side note. But anyway, I was at the pharmacy and I pulled up. Another car was there. It was a double lane. And this there was this beautiful girl. And I just went, good, good. Just like the most immature person. Just slime ball pig you could possibly be. But I was probably listening to some 90s rock. And I got to get out of that mindset. Because 90s rock, you know, wasn't a good time for um, equality. But anyway, I said it loud. <laughs> she heard me. And it was kind of funny because I think more than one person heard me because everybody was kind of like laughing in the in the in the part. And uh I tried oh, man, I was just like I was just trying stumbling, stumbling. I was like, "Oh my gosh, they heard me. I got to own it." And that's the only thing you can do at that point. You got to own it. And he just said, my bad. That's what I said. I said, then I noticed that she had braces. And me just being awkward and, you know, just making the situation even worse. I was like, oh, (laughs) I complimented her braces. (laughs) There's nothing like an adult with braces, bro. Actually, it's kind of incredible. Because I feel like uh, you probably are self-conscious. But you're just like, dude, I'm going to put this work in. Because I guess like silver braces is a two-year commitment. For me, it was 17 years because I had the worst set of teeth a person could ever have. I had teeth on teeth. Actually, I remember one time that I got a phone call from SeaWorld. And this was before SeaWorld got all that heat because I was a young man. And word got out because they took a mold of my, my mouth that I had the mouth of a shark. Of a shark that had crowded teeth. And they wanted to study me because, you know, at that time they didn't know how to study sharks. They would they, they basically said, we heard that you, we have your frame of your, that was before internet or anything. We have a, we have a copy of it. And it's like we have never seen anything like it before. And we would like you to come in and we would like to study your teeth. And I was like, okay. And, you know, they studied it and they they advanced. Like they realized the shark, like how a shark attacks and like how it bites and, you know, and and they and they got a lot of understanding from it. So I've been, I was, stu- I was actually studied earlier by people, so I was in a lab, and they are just looking at my teeth, you know, but then I got braces forever, so going back to the commitment, I had braces for a very long time, for many years, so I respect a woman, I met a woman the other day that said she had braces, this was her third time getting braces, and she was at least 60, and I was like, nah, because, you know, that's a commitment, I respect that, because you're trying to better yourself, slowly and surely, because every month or two, you got to go get those things tightened. And that hurt. I remember that hurt. And I remember my, my lips bleeding a lot. And I remember wrestling with braces. And I'd be dumb enough not to have a mouthpiece. So basically, dripping blood every match. I got whooped. And I'd look on the shoulder of my opponent. Blood. My blood. You know, back, and back then, people were just kind of over the, the scare of transmitted diseases through the blood-borne pathogens. But now it's kind of back. But back then, they were like, oh, just bleed out. You'll be all right. But man, I used to bleed, bruh. Man, I can still feel them on my mouth. I can still feel them on my mouth. It was a beautiful thing. But anyway, this girl had braces, bruh. And I said, when do you get them off? And it was weird. Awkward laughter. Paid my rent. Or paid my, <laughs> paid my rent. Paid my uh, bill. And left. That was... Uh, the interaction I had today, but I thought to myself, I was like, I'm going to talk about this on the podcast, and it made it that much better. It's almost in the moment, I was like thinking about this. I was like, uh, yeah, you definitely need to talk about this in the 
podcast. You know what I'm saying? Um, that is, uh, you know, that's a, just a little something, something that I put together. Um, you know, so I was thinking about this and maybe bring a little flavor to the podcast. I'm looking at uh, a couple things, different things, and I thought about this. I'm gonna have some more callers because I felt like they really went well and work kind of got out. And I got some, I got some good calls, so I'm gonna play a call. Um, you know, next step, and uh, you know, it's gonna we're gonna try to get to the bottom of some stuff and uh, go from there. And uh, but I was thinking about my favorite th- internet craze, and I was thinking about this too: how the internet has completely fallen off because it's not that good anymore. But when it's first started, or not first started, but about a few years in it, pretty deep. They had this thing called Hot or Not, and uh, I was really big on it. I put up my picture and see if I was hot. You're either hot or you're not. It's a thumbs up or thumbs down. It's kind of cool. It's really cool. And I was thinking about doing that on this podcast. So what I'd like you to do is uh, DM me a picture of your aunt, okay? Uh, she could be whatever, okay? And we could do a little something called Hot or Not. We'll come up with a little jingle or jangle. Put it on the podcast. You know, we just you know, kind of break it down. Hot or not, you know. And uh, I thought that would be kind of cool, you know. And we're not just doing looks. Because you can tell a lot about picture about a personality from a picture. So it's not just superficial looks. Like I can really analyze and break down a person's personality and who they are. as a per- Like what they do day to day based on just a photo. So send in a picture of your aunt. Um, already got a couple, you know, kind of threw that idea out for my close listeners and, uh, you know, and, and they were really excited. So, uh, I was thinking about maybe doing something like that and just kind of mixing it up, you know, because, you know, that's the kind of, uh, that's the kind of flavor I have, bro. So, you know, thinking about a little something, uh, you know, would be that. Um, so, oh man, I got. I'm so excited, dude. I got tickets to an event that is highly controversial. And it is making news everywhere. And I just want to be a little bit a part of history. You know what I'm saying? So, man, I am so... It's a, it's a, it's an entertainer. It's a family entertainer. Um, you know, it's kind of uh, accepted by all people. Um, but man, I scored some ticks and I'm going and I haven't been this hyped up, uh, for a show since I went to the live taping of Rock of Love episode four. It was great. It's, uh, it's when Sticky got eliminated and it was dramatic and, uh, that's, that's kind of changed the terms, you know, kind of tied of their, or changed the tide of the show, so, but, um, you know, I'm just, I'm going to, uh, next I'm going to recap, talk a little bit about it. You know, I got, I want to put a teaser out there because I got to get you back to the next episode. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I'm excited about that. And I wanted to talk about, you know, maybe I was going to talk about some of my hobbies, you know, and break that down. So we're going to go from that. CC, do you remember CC? Have an amazing week, lonely uncle. <laughs> 